Hello, this is Jamil Sweat for Gunstruck Reviews, and today we're going to be uh, doing a small little review on the uh, Troy Industries XM177E2. Uh, it's a commemorative carbine made by Troy Industries, representing one of the rifles that were used in, during the Vietnam War. And today I have Fred Masterson with me, who is a professional trainer with 30 years experience. Um, Fred wrote an article for Athlon Outdoors on this specific rifle, so I'm going to let Fred tell us all about it. Sure, I'd be glad to. Thanks for having me on today. The Troy's commemorative rifle is an interesting piece because it's a throwback to the original rifle used by the MACV SOG group uh, during the Vietnam War. And they've gone through painstaking effort to really duplicate that rifle as much as possible. Uh, many of the parts, in fact, for example, the grip here are actually vintage Vietnam era parts. These aren't just manufactured to be copies. The gun, for the most part, is as close to a, a perfect replica as possible. We'll start at the front here. Um, this extremely long muzzle brake or compensator is a unique piece because it was designed to suppress the sound and reduce the muzzle flash. An interesting note about this is that in today's world, the uh, ATF classifies this device as a suppressor. And as such, you would need an SOT or you would need to get a, a tax stamp in order to get possession of one of these, if you could find one. Pretty unique piece of history. Uh, it's got a nice thin barrel, please. But, I mean, but this one is not that, right? That's correct. Um, everything on this gun is civilian designed. Uh, it's a semi-automatic only gun. This is a clone. This is simply a, an extended flash hider. Um, everything on this gun, there's no NFA required at all, so you can just buy this gun off the shelf. Um, a couple other unique things about the gun um, is we'll move here just a little bit, if you don't mind. Thank you. Um, it has a safe semi, and it has an auto selector. Um, that is for looks, unfortunately. It's even got a replica pin in here to replicate where the auto sear would be. It is designed specifically to be only semi-auto, and in fact, it's marked for semi-auto only inside and has a little manufacturing um, work done in there to make sure that that happens. Other things about the gun are the aluminum buttstock, the black aluminum buttstock. This is very period correct. Um, we're so used to today these, these being uh, polymer, and to have something like this is pretty interesting. The forward assist is a little unique, and once again, period correct. It's got this foot down here. Most uh, forward assists that we see today are simply round. Um, these are definitely an indicator of an older gun. Um, additionally, th there's a sling that comes with this that is paracord de designed, and it wraps around this, and the special operations troops at that time chose that because it was much quieter. Troy has done a fantastic job with this gun, and as I said, it's as close to an exact copy as possible. The gun, this is their 50-year commemorative um, effort on this gun, and it's made pretty much, well, not pretty much, it's made exactly from the plans that the gun was designed from in 1967. So I'm very impressed with their efforts. On top of that, I would throw out a big congratulations and kudos to Troy because a good portion of the pro proceeds made from this weapon are going to special operations charities. So they're, they're good people doing good work. Well, awesome. And I noticed that you know that most of the modern collapsible stocks are six position. This yeah. one is only two position, right? That's right. That's right. So this is unlike the new ones that has like five or six positions. This one is only completely closed or completely open, right? Yeah. Understand, though, that that was pretty revolutionary at the time, that it even adjustable, because we're coming from the M16 A1 or A2 with a fixed stock. The fact that we can have a commando rifle where we can actually make the weapon shorter, that was a pretty slick deal at the time. Evolution tells us that as time goes by, we add more and more options for, to fit different people. But the fact that it was adjusted at all was a pretty big deal. Well, awesome. And you did test fire this gun. Absolutely, I did. And how was the accuracy on it? It actually was, was actually pretty good. Um, it's by no means a precision rifle. This is a minute of man gun. And I shot it in the inch and a half, two inch range, as much we would normally expect from a rifle of that era. Um, a lot of people today were having sub minute of a uh, sub minute of angle AR-15s and rifles. So when you talk about a gun that doesn't shoot a minute of angle, 
Um, a lot of people don't realize that's the way most ARs used to be always. Yeah, and on, only in the rec most recent times, 20, 25 years, have the AR-15 become a submineral angle firearm. Absolutely. In fact, I would argue that given a little bit of time and copper the barrel up a little bit and some match ammo that I could possibly get that group down nice and small. Troy's, Troy makes a fantastic rifle, even if it is traditionally a retro or commuter rifle. They don't hold back on the manufacturing process. Okay, so they actually are putting all their effort into oh, yeah. making that, a that's rifle. A, that's not just a one-off type of thing. They, if they're going to make a commander of a gun, they're going to make one that runs well as, as well. And reliability. And reliability. Yeah, I had no yeah. issues whatsoever. Well, great. I am going to do some firing with this gun here in a few minutes. And we'll just play with it a little more and see how it performs for that's me because you already did it. Well, thanks for watching. Please stay tuned for more informative videos about firearms.